what is up my friends it's another monday another video article by me jim davis on coolstuffinc.com today we're playing some standard and we're playing a deck that's had an interesting path so far in standard this deck was the darling of the pro tour you know in various forms of white weenie and white weenie splash red aggro and then fell off a little bit and now is starting to see a bit of a resurgence this is Essentially white weenie splashing red. They call it Boros weenie. It's more like white with a, a dash of red. And um, this is played by Oliver 2 in uh, the Mox, the Magic Online Championship Series Monthly last weekend. One of the, um, I suppose two weekends ago, one of the most recent large standard tournaments. Um, I actually also played Boros weenie in the Mox. I went 5-3. I had a rough last round. And... Um, there was a list that went 8-0, but it was a very bizarre list that was playing um, no copies of Benoish Marshall. It was playing two Mountains, main deck of Johnny's. It seemed very heavy on four mana spells. I had tried it. It seemed a little clunky for my taste. So a little more of, a little more of the traditional build here. And um, most of the cards we're used to seeing. Um, the core of the deck is Adanto Vanguard. One of the best two drops we've seen in a long time. Uh, extremely durable. If this is a card that surprises you, you're like, man, four life, that's a lot of life. Uh, don't let it. Uh, this is one of the fastest decks in the format. And it doesn't matter if you win the game at 20 life or 12 life or even 8 life. Um, having an unkillable 3-1 that's just attacking every single turn is extremely powerful. History of Benalia, one of the best cards in the format. There's no two ways about it. And Venerated Loxodon. A card that um, I'm personally working on trying out in modern and other formats. This card's really, really good. This card does a great job of providing you an aggressive start that's also somewhat immune to Deafening Clarion. You know, if we go one drop into a Danto Vanguard into Venerated Loxodon, we have put a board state in play that isn't too um, bad against a card like Deafening Clarion. It gives you a 4-4 as well. Pumps team. Just a great, great card. Very, very powerful. Uh, Benoist Marshall, the Glorious Anthem on a Stick. Uh, the usual 16 one-drops. Decks have been flirting around with um, the card Snubhorn Sentry. And I think that this card is a little too low floor, high ceiling for my tastes. Um, it is very good on your good draws, where you play a bunch of permanents early and you have a, basically a wild Nakato on standard. But if things are going wrong and your creatures are dying and you mulligan and you miss a land drop or two, it's just pretty hard to turn on City's Blessing. I do like this card. I'm not going to lie. I've put this card in decks before, but I'm not a fan overall. So we're playing the um, usual four Legions Landing. We're playing four Sky Marcher Aspirant. Uh, Savannah Lions flying later on. Uh, big fan of this card. Four Hunted Witness, which helps to insulate us against removal spells and mass removal. And then four Dauntless Bodyguard, another important card against mass removal spells. So if we can go, you know, one drop on turn one, and then Hunted Witness and a Bodyguard protecting our other one drop on two, and then a History on three, we're pretty resistant to a card like Deafening Clarion because we can sacrifice the Bodyguard, we get a token, History still makes another token. So our goal is to try and work around the mass removal like that. Um... Red Splash is for Heroic Reinforcements. Very, very good curve topper in an aggressive deck for a number of reasons. Um, aside from being 4 power of haste for 4 mana, pumps your entire team, plays excellently with History Banalia because the History token you make on the following turn that normally can't attack, well now it can, which is really, really cool. Also excellent turning on Legion's Landing, excellent post Wrath, um, the mana is a little tough because uh, because of Benoish Marshall, you are required to play a lot of white sources. You can't really play a mountain in your deck. So we only have eight red sources, so I like shaving down to only three copies, but the, the power is there. Um, and of course, we want, we, want, we want the red sideboard cards also. So sideboard, four honor guard for green, black, and goblin chain whirler. Pretty easy. Also good against that new big red deck that's been popping up that plays chain whirler and siege gang commander. Uh, some extra removal spells and baffling end. And then we have our bigger stuff for we want to juke a little bit against the um, control decks. We can board out some of our, our weaker one drops and board in a mountain. And copies of Experimental Frenzy to allow us to kind of go nuts in the mid game. Uh, to Banefire also for that matchup 
you know, they're going to cast Settle the Wreckage against us, give us a bunch of lands, let's just kill them. And then two copies of Lyra Dawnbringer um, for decks like Mono Red or the Mirror, where they're not going to have many answers. Um, this is the big uh, top end game end of it you want. Let's jump in a league. I think this deck is a great starting point if you're just getting into standard. Maybe you're um, a modern player who qualified for SCG Con and now you got to play standard. Maybe you're looking to start playing on Magic Arena. Um, maybe you're looking to start playing at FNM. Whatever it is, a deck like this is a, is a great starting point because it is fast, aggressive, powerful, somewhat straightforward. You know, you're not going to be getting into crazy control mirrors or things like that, but also has a lot of interesting play and decisions to it. Um, cards like Adanto Vanguard, Dauntless Bodyguard, a lot of choices to make. And then your sequencing against your opponent's spells with this deck is very important. So understanding how to play around Deafening Clarion or Ravenous Chupacabra or the many things you may play against. Knowing when to use your removal spell, because we only have four of them in Conclave Tribunal. And knowing how to sequence your spells and pace out your threats. All very important skills that are look simple, but is deceptively difficult. All right, let's go round one. We're on the draw. We have a little more of our top end here in our locks it on our Conclave Tribunal. Put a mulligan six. I think his hand's going to be a keep. Um, History, History of Benali is our best turn three play. We also have a, a Marshall and a Loxodon. Only one one drop and only two lands, but we're on the draw. And um, our deck is mostly comprised of one mana creatures and lands. You know, by the numbers, we have 16 one drops and 20 ish lands. So, very likely to get there. You know, the worst case scenario would, would be to draw. You know, two more venerated Loxodons and a Conclave Tribunal, but that's obviously not likely. Sulfur Falls tapped. And another History of Benali. Okay. Also, I mean, history is great. So drawing another one's not the end of the world. Sulfur Falls could be Drake's, could be um, Jeskai Control. Looks like it's the Drake's deck. All right. So turn two, Goblin Electromancer on the play is definitely their, um, their good draw. But we're going to see if we can power through it here. They don't usually play any mass removal, so our double history should be good. And also the card venerated Loxodon is very good against them. Having four toughness forces them to have lava coil, and they can pump the other creatures up out of shock and shock range. Alright, so tap land go on turn two is not ideal, but we have the top end to make it make it work. Ultramancer is very scary because it allows them to, you know, double and triple spell on turn three, which can lead to their most busted starts. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a, a lot of removal, and it's kind of important in this matchup to hold on to your removal spells to kill Crackling Drake um, and or Arclight Phoenix. I'll see you develop your board. Wow. That is something else. Electromancer, attack, go. Uh, somewhat surprising turn of events. Um, so we're going to fire off an attack first. If their hand is not full of proactive cantrips, it must be full of a lot of removal. Or not. Very weird start here. I mean, these decks don't usually play counter spells. So. Mm. Very, very peculiar. They did mulligan. And they bottomed. Right, so they have a shock. Okay. I find it a little interesting that they wouldn't have shocked the bodyguard. So next turn, we have another history to play. Um, we can maybe try and get a locks it on and play, you know, with a, a Donda Vanguard and token. We'll see. Um, one of the important things to do is you're always trying to figure out your opponent's hand based on the plays that they make and kind of think about their deck and think about cards they could cast or could have and based on what they do. And this is why I'm having trouble pace, placing my opponent's hand because so much of their deck is cantrips, you know, um, radical idea, uh, charter course, opt, etc., etc. And the fact that they just said go on that turn doing nothing is very weird. You know, so 
we have to erase most of the cantrip options and then start thinking about cards like Arclight Phoenix, Crackling Drake. You know, maybe they're a little flooded on lands. You know, their hand could be like Crackling Drake, Arclight, Land, Land or something. Not really sure. It's a, it's a weird spot. You know, and when your opponent does something weird, it's on you to try and figure out, all right, well, this is weird. They did nothing on turn three. What could they possibly have? So they probably have some number of their four drop creatures. Maybe some lands. Again, they mulligan to six and they, they scribe bottom, so their hand is definitely not ideal. Okay. Makes sense. And they're getting aggressive, too. Which is interesting. So they, they want to play a shorter game rather than a longer game. Another thing that makes it seem like their hand is very weak. All right, so... It's a lot of Benoish Marshals. We are at two uh, or 11. Um, I don't, I'm not really scared of dying too much. They could have another Arclight Phoenix, and they're trying to just, like, punk us out because their hand's really bad. Um, we are a little glutted on three. We're looking to add to the board for sure. Um, typically, I'd rather play the Marshall a little later on in the sequence. And we're probably just going to play another History here. History, the token can also block the Electromancer. Um, we're setting up for a big third chapter turn as far as pumping our entire team. You know, we have a pretty big attack, potential attack next turn. So if they're trying to race us, it does not seem like it's going to be an effective thing. You know, we're not super on the board. All right, so kind of what we expected. All right. I mean, they are, so they are, they're saying their hand is really, really bad. They're trying to race. Well, we're about to tell a story. Leech Designing is actually a pretty nice draw. Because it gives us um, an extra mana and a permanent for our Conclave Tribunal. Now our goal is going to be just to not die. Um, so we're going to have to have to Tribunal one of these Arclight Phoenixes, I think. Uh, 4, 8, 12, 13. We could also just, that's uh, still a little short. All right, so we absolutely need to, need to tribunal one of these arc lights. Um, if they have a third arc light, we might actually just be dead, and you can't do anything about it. Uh, we can't push across lethal here, and there's just not much we can really do. You know, they they chump lock and swing back. We have no way to kill this and also present lethal. So. If they have a shock, I don't think we can actually win the game, so there's no point in playing around it. Um, I think we're just going to... We Legion's Landing, get a token, attack, get a mana. We'll have four creatures here, and three. I'm looking at a post-combat Benelish ben Marshal, which is... Actually, no, wait, we can just go Marshal, attack, then... Yeah, that works, actually. Convoke is very interesting. So we can go Marshall, attack with everything, they block, take 10, and then we tap the four creatures and play Conclave Tribunal, and then just hope they don't have a Phoenix or a Shock. Yeah. Vigilance obviously plays well with Convoke. All right. Our opponent has taken a very interesting plan of action this game. They've recognized that their hand is very bad, and they are just trying to cheese through because our hand was a little bit slow. It would be very embarrassing if we lost this game. To 2-2, two, two, shock, 
three two flyer, three two flyer, and nothing else. Their deck is definitely not doing what it's supposed to be doing. But well, we could lose here. We are dead to an arc light or a shock. So our opponent, our opponent, our opponent played that game pretty well. Honestly, they recognized that their hand was very bad, and that our draw was a little slow, and they found a path to victory, and it didn't work out for them. But they gave themselves a chance to win a game they probably had no chance to win. So, good play from our opponent. All right. What are we going to want here? Honestly, don't want to make too many changes. Baffling end is too narrow. We don't want the grindy cards. In Frenzy. Excuse me. In Frenzy or Banefire or Johnny. Lyra is a little interesting because it's very hard for them to kill. But I don't think it's really necessary either. They don't usually bring in any mass removal because they have their own creatures. They just have less spot removal. Um, they can have the card, the the melody. Let's see, your blue, blue X a steel creature. That's usually their answer to a Danto Vanguard, which is a little scary. But we can just power through that. Um, there's nothing I, I actively want to cut. So I, I think I'm fine. I'm going to run this back. And we'll see how they sideboard it and go from there. Only options I can see are maybe like one copy of Baffling End just to have an extra out to Goblin Electromancer or Creature Based Steel or um, possibly Lyra if you want to go a little bit bigger. All right. um, this hand's not going to work. On the draw, maybe you can consider it, but on the play, we can't risk not drawing a land. It's just too slow. All right, well, now we have more one drops. We have a scry, and we have our, our best three drop. So we're going to keep. It's not great, but all right, bottom that. The scry makes a pretty big difference. All right. Um, Allegiance Landing or Dauntless Bodyguard. Bodyguard attacks through Electromancer. Um, it does more damage overall. And there's nothing really worth protecting at the moment. Like, protecting a lifelinker token is not going to matter. It's very doubtful they have Fiery Cannonade, so... Definitely want to draw a land next turn. Um, our hand is very, very powerful, if we can find some lands. Alright, good. So this that their deck is very very finicky. When they play an Electromancer, it can sometimes feel like they're playing modern. They're just like cantrip, 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 Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. But when they don't draw Electromancer, they're doing plays like this: just turn to discovery, not affecting the board, turn to radical idea, things of that nature. Not very exciting and gives us a lot of time to set up. So just unfortunate, a little rude, you know. They kept both cards on top which is surprising. Usually you end up milling something. All right, that's obviously very bad for us. Um, we're going to play the Aspirant because, again, more power and can attack through a Electromancer. Um, but if we don't draw a land next turn, we're probably in pretty big trouble. Sure. Works for me. Ugh. So as we saw with our first hand, I was saying that you know, with one landers, it's not going to work out. Uh, you're seeing that here. Obviously, we mulliganed, and I think our hand was definitely a keep. But this is what happens when you keep a one lander with this deck, and you don't draw another land. You're just going one one, one one. You're not able to deploy your cards fast enough to matter. Okay, so that's not the worst for us. <sighs> Very frustrating. Um, they have four spells in hand. It's very likely they can recur Phoenix next turn. We're not going to bother um trying to push through. Uh, 
Magic Online. Hello. So pre-combat chart, of course. I mean, they probably want to discard a Phoenix here. Nope, it's a mountain. Interesting. So their hand, in theory, should be good because they kept both discovery cards. They kept seven. But choosing to discard a card there without a Phoenix in hand is a little weird. They could, could obviously attack. It means they're probably light on removal. Again, in standard, most of all, it's very, very important to look at each play your opponent makes and try and see how it fits into the overall picture of what they could have in hand. You know, um, playing a, a pre-combat charter course with a creature in play is a little weird. Why would they do that kind of thing? You know, so they probably are scared, don't want to attack, want to keep blockers back, being they're a little light on removal. Or not that light on removal. And now they want to attack. So they must have drawn the Lava Coil off the chart, of course. Um, hey, we did it. It's probably too late, but... Um, them attacking makes me a little scared. They might have niv it Or some other sort of big stabilizing force next turn. Nope, just a Shock. Okay. So they might, they might, have, they might have drawn Shock Lava Coil off that chart, of course, honestly. And that's what changed the, the texture of their game plan from wanting to block to wanting to attack. But clearly we have a lot of gas here. You know, we're just uh, concerned with staying alive and keeping things rolling. You know, we draw land, we have a, a lot of power and creatures to put in play. So the impetus is going to be on them to, uh, to kill us before we get going here. I'd prefer if this is a Phoenix, not a Drake. That's probably a Drake because they tap weird. No. Okay. All right. So this is fine. Now we get to flip our landing. Um. Yep. This is all good. We lose a creature here. We gain some life. Now we have our third land. We get to play history. And we start playing histories. We have Conclave Tribunal to answer uh, Phoenix. They're down to two cards in hand. So things are going a lot better for us here. Electromancer. Tormenting Voice, Discarding Mountain. When you're playing a lot of cantrips and card draw, there's definitely a fail rate where you can um, just draw a lot of lands. And it looks like they're in that. They only have one card left. Okay. So you get a token. We drew another land, which is excellent. And now you can just go history. And we can tribunal one of these um, arc lights. You can also go marshal. We go marshal, and then one, two, three, four on the arc light. Yeah. I like that. Also gets our life linker to gain some life, which is be important because it looks like they're in a similar scenario to game one where they're going to try and race us because their hand just isn't very good. So let's do that. Let's try Bunal. And we're going to tap the Hunted Witness. We're doing this pre-combat in case things die. Um, or they have a shock mid-combat or just some way to, to, you know, if they kill my knight. Also, we want to we plus the marshal too. Weird match so far. I would say that both of our decks are not really doing what they intended to do. It's turn seven. And we just started actually getting on the board. They cast a bunch of spells and didn't do anything. Uh, game one, they cast a bunch of spells and didn't do anything. And our we didn't play a one drop, a, a two drop or a one drop on turn two. So kind of weird games from uh, all around. But 
Now we found our lands and our cards are on, so we're in great shape. I think typically this is a pretty good matchup for us. Um, the card Dondo Vanguard gives him a lot of trouble. Um, and then our fast clock is usually enough to overcome what they're trying to do. You know, they have to spend a little too much time setting up. All right, well, this is very scary. Um, because they have lethal next turn. But they also have to block or they're dead. So we get to fire in for a pretty big attack. And... Unfortunately, we might just die to this Crackling Drake. Uh, we just don't really have a... If they can put... If that's two more cards in the graveyard. So now it's at nine. We are attacking for a ton. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We They have to block with Wolf. We're good. I forgot our, our history is going to the third chapter next turn. So we have five, five, five. And they have to block both or they're dead. So another history. Grandpa, tell me a story. So an attack like this is pretty simple. We attack with everything because we realize they have to block both five fives or they die. So it's not like our hunter witness is going to die. They've been on 11 life. This game would be a lot different. Because they could just take the 10 and go to 1, but. And, nah, I'd say the game is mostly over. Um, them being at 3, we're, we're at 10. We can't die to, you know, a bunch of Phoenixes. That card's actually really good. This is a card that's been adopted by these decks that I think is fantastic. And it, that's, a, that's a pretty good sequence. Gives them multiple blockers. All right, that is that is quite the uh, the swing. And now we don't really have any good attacks. Okay, so we'll just play their history, and we'll just ship the turn. And next turn, our our chapter, our third chapter goes off. Hopefully, their hand isn't too good at this point. So they, if they can make a bunch of birds, uh, we're in big trouble. All right, that is that is bad for us. Yeah, so I would say it looks like we're going to lose this game. That's tough. That is definitely tough. Fortunately, the fact that... Ah, that's, a, that's a good draw. The fact that we drew... Uh, you know, didn't draw land. A second land until turn five may have actually caught up to us. Although Marshall is good here. They have to chump the knight. Um, Hunted witness, I guess, just gets blocked by the murmuring mystic. Doesn't even need to attack. But next turn we have uh, the third chapter going off again. So we have very big attackers. It's very, very dependent on if, it, if they draw a spell or not next turn. If they draw a cantrip into a cantrip, it can make a few birds. We're in huge trouble. But if they miss, a chance. Card's very, very good. All right, so nothing. So it's not a sorcery speed spell. Oh, talk about your good draws. Um, that is pretty ideal. All right, well, we're shoving. This is a monster attack now. And everything's coming in. No quarter. All right, so we'll never know if we needed to draw that or not, but cool. I think it's a usual, usually a good matchup. Very, very weird match there, obviously. Um, things did not go as planned for either deck, but that's kind of the benefit of a, deck, of a deck like this is that we're fast and aggressive and consistent, and if our opponent stumbles, they're dead. Even though we stumbled in game two, they didn't do much either, and then eventually we got there. So... Aggression plus power. History of Benali is insane, as we saw that game.
you know, reinforcements is great. Marshall's great. And we get to back that up with a lot of one drop and fast aggression too. Okay. Um, four landers, never the order of the day, but we have our perfect curve here. We have one drop history into, re into heroic reinforcements. That is a lot of damage. So while we're, oh, we didn't even draw land. Wow. So we got to trust our deck a little bit that we're going to find something to do on turn two, be it a one drop or a two drop. And then our hand's actually perfect. And even if we miss, our hand is still very good. Being on the draw, oh, so they're playing probably Jeskai control. Jeskai's moved away from search. All right, so that's obviously very unfortunate. We drew removal spell land, but our hand is still very good. So it has been weird that we've said go on multiple turn twos in this league so far, which seems almost impossible with 16 one drops and four two drops, but right, they dump in a Ralzeric. This is the interesting deck so far. Treasure map. All right, so probably just Jessica. I mean, ideally, there is no um, deafening clarity in our future. But next turn, we uh, can ideally flip this Legion's Landing. Um, they've been a sabotage. Upkeep Scry. All right, so they are looking for lands, and they found one. And they have a lava coil. That's fine. We get a token. Second Legion's Landing is not ideal, but just now we see the power of reinforcements attacking for a million. Our knight gets to attack. Our Legion's Landing flips out of nowhere. Uh, just great. And then I think we're not going to play with Second Legion's Landing here. Uh, we're just going to say go. Yeah. They could have a Master Rule spell. Right now we're so far ahead, there's no reason to, uh, to overcommit. You know, they're mana screwed, trying to put together some land drops with a combination of search for Escanta and treasure map. And uh, we can just keep applying the pressure. Adanto's flipped now, which is great. We are flooded, but probably some sort of turbo nib visit deck, and we have Conclave Tribunal at the ready too, so. I mean, bombs away. They go to two, and there's no reason to play any cards here. We can just say go. We have tons of good attackers in play. Nib visit next turn is possible, but we have we have tribunal at the ready. We have a token to make with the Danto. Again, opponent stumbles. It's very nice to play a deck where if your opponent stumbles, you can punish them adequately. And even though our, our draw wasn't that good, again, where we didn't have a two drop, didn't have a play on turn two, um, you know, history, reinforcements, enough to make up for that. Looks like they are playing straight blue red though. This looks like possibly a blue red version of um, the Adrian Sullivan Jeskai treasure map deck. So I'm sure they have a lot of copies of Nim is it in their deck. So we're gonna need to leave these tribunals in. Okay. Um, we're gonna assume they're playing a lot of removal spells. Um, are we gonna want Frenzy? Given that, so when you board in Frenzy, you have to understand that you know, you're trying to play a longer game with them. And the question is, is their longer game plan better than our longer game plan? Um, Nib Mizzet beats a Frenzy heads up. We're not going to outdraw them with Frenzy um, if they're playing Nib Mizzet. They're not playing Settle, so Banefire is much less interesting. I'm pretty tempted to just leave it as is, honestly. I know it's weird now that we've, 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 we've not sideboarded in two matches in a row, but... I don't think that if is the if they're playing map map and they're playing only blue red, they're probably playing a million Niv Mizzets. And I don't think that we beat Niv Mizzet with Experimental Frenzy. I think we just can't beat it. You know, we have to kill it or kill them. And they can't have, they don't have Deafening Clarion, assumedly. So they're not, they're not playing white. So I'm not super scared of the master removal. We're showing right back. A little sketch, but to keep on a mulligan six. I mean, again, you know, the bulk of our deck is one drops and two drops. We have 21 and two drops. So ideally we draw one or two of them. Drawing a land isn't the worst either. Um, I think we're better off. I guess the, 
Lava Coil. Yeah, I'm going to lead off on Legion's Landing. One or two life might matter. And then... If it's a removal spell they're going to play, it's Lava Coil. It's obviously good against the Witness. Not too much of a difference here, I don't think, but... That card's pretty good. Very solid sideboard card against Aggro Decks. I think we're trying to play both Witnesses and Sega. I'm not, I'm not trading my token for their Hatchling. And then next turn we can try and set up for a, you know, a Loxodon or Marshall. Shiv and fire of a token, sure. It's tough. It's tough. Again, I'm not really interested in trading and giving them a 3-3. So, I think we're happy playing a Danto Vanguard and just standing pat. Trying to build a board here and get a Loxodon going, and they're doing a good job of keeping us from that. Nice. They have two cards left. They've... Always one mana behind our Loxodon. Alright, it's attack time. Hatchling very good against um, Adanto Vanguard because you they block it, I pay four, and the 3-3 three, three can turn around and attack us. But I will still make that exchange, given the board state. Play a witness and pass. We really need a, another another mana source here. Loxodon also matches up well against the dinosaur. Jeez. This card's good. If you're struggling against mono white, this is definitely an excellent cyborg card. Man. All right, so attacking with everything, they flip landing doesn't make a lot of sense right now because we just play a Marshall that might die. I'm just gonna play a Loxodon, take a turn off. Weird deck. All right, well they're out of cards, so they kept the card on top though. Uh, we have a ton of top end here. We just need to draw some lands. This is aggressive. Jeez. <sighs> so we can attack and flip our landing, but then they get to crack back for a million, and it costs us four life. Um, and we're looking to extend this game, not shorten it because we have five spells in our hand and they have zero cards in hand. We just need to draw some lands. I'm just going to play a, a bodyguard here and say, yep. And we're going to protect the Vanguard, however weird that sounds. Now we could attack and stack the bodyguard with the Vanguard, but I think it's bad too. We'll just say go here. You know, they have no cards in their hand. Let's just try and slow things down a bit and draw some lands. Triple Raptor Hatchling. I feel like we still haven't had a good draw yet. You know, like a, just a real nice, like, one, you know, curve out. One drop, one drop, one drop. You know, creature, creature, locks it on. Draw. Alright, so they're getting in. Um, I'm comfortable blocking here. I'm just upgrading a witness. We can even block with all three, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that's a little crazy. We'd be attempting to trade a bodyguard for uh, a dinosaur. And losing all our witnesses, too.
Now with the land, we gain the ability to attack profitably. All these three threes are no joke. I'm still interested in blocking. Also, we pump the team; it's more lifelink too. So, and we are we are kind of dying. So, all right, maybe we just have to attack now. I think it's, they just they're gonna have three three threes ready to kill us. Maybe that's okay. We just need to we just need to make a make need to make a land drop here. Legion's landing. All right. I mean, this sucks, but I'm just gonna let these die. All right, let's double up on one of them and try and battle through. We do have a lot of power in our hands, so. Conclave Tribunal. So we kind of want to save a tribunal for, um, for niv it, but we might just need to cast this now, honestly. Playing Marshall, and then trying to block, just attack for two. I mean, if they if they kill the Marshall. I think you know, we're, we're gonna play the Marshall and just pray that we attack for two here. We can block a three three, and get him next turn. All right. So they attack. We'll block a knight on a dinosaur, and go to three and just hope they don't have much. All right, so they're definitely playing nib music because they have dive down in their deck. Another legion's landing. Um, okay, it's not the end of the world. Vigilance, token. So we play landing. Only attack for two, and the marshals to block. All right. No dive down, please. If you're looking for a good cyborg card, it's aggro decks. Raptor Hatchling is a great one. And we still can't draw um, a red source, but now we're in better shape, obviously. I don't think we really have any good attacks, though. Could attack with all three. Um, and then you would just block one of these, take five, we gain four. I think you should wait one turn. We draw a red source here. Our attack is a thousand times better. No counter spell, please. Alright, well, that probably does it. Alright. Kind of a weird game. Um, you know, again, we. Got stuck on lands for a bit. They they mulliganed and didn't do much, but they drew three raptor hatchlings. Um, hatchling is good. 
That is a serious card. I don't know if it's worth it to bring in a card like Baffling End, but it's an important thing to be aware of. Uh, our goal is to make it so the the 1-1 one, one doesn't kill our creature and then just deal with the 3-3, three, three, I suppose. All right. Uh, another awkward hand, but we do have a good amount of power. We have our best possible 2-drop, a good 3-drop, 4-drop. I'm going to keep again. Um, again, we're going to trust our deck a little bit. It hasn't really been paying off for us, but... Turn to a Dondo Vanguard on the play is just phenomenal against most decks in the format in game one. They just don't have answers to it. Oh boy. Uh, this hand does seem bad in the mirror. Landing's not a bad draw, though. Hmm, interesting. Amera. This card's good. Second to Loxodon. Alright, well, seems unlikely they have much removal in their deck. And Marshall can block Amera, so I'm pretty happy just going Marshall here. Attacking for four. Try to set up for a nice Loxodon turn next turn. Um, if they're playing some sort of like green white tokens deck. We are not going to be able to compete with them in the late games. We need to kill them fast. Uh, cards like March of the Multitudes, basically unbe unbeatable for us. They have a Tribunal here for my Marshal to tap their Amara. That's pretty bad for us, but... Hmm. Okay, so they're a little more aggressive. Pretty good, honestly. Like, I don't think I want to trade my Marshal with this Amara. Um, I might have to, though. Now they have their own Marshal, which we can't readily remove. Probably can't beat a Lifelinker every turn from Amara. I think I need to block here. This sucks, but... A fun scenario. All right, that was a good draw. So we'll just, we'll just take a turn off to locks it on here. One drops, of course, play excellent with venerated locks it on because you get to just play them for free, essentially. Our Skymatcher Aspirant will probably be important in this match, too, as far as flying goes. We're almost there for that. Um, now, if they want to flip Legion's Landing, they got to walk into our 4-4. It's not a bad turn for us. And we'll see how far we want to go on Loxodon next turn. Loxodon is definitely kind of a setup card. Whatever turn you cast it, you can't attack. But, so doing two in a row means two turns of not attacking. The first turn's okay, but now you have a lot of power in play. But if our attacks don't look good, that's fine. Flipping our landing is also not a super high priority at the moment. Okay. Amara does seem like a little bit of a harder splash than um, Heroic Reinforcements because Heroic Reinforcements is better later in the game and Amara is better on turn two. And it's really hard to play any forest in your deck when you're playing Benoish Marshall. So their mana base seems a little worse than ours. Deck looks interesting though. But if you play against a deck that looks a little weird that you're not expecting, it's not a you know a normal part of the metagame. It's definitely on you to try and figure out as quickly as possible what cards may be in their deck to play around them. You know, if you play against the mirror, you know their entire deck list. But if you play against a weirder deck, then you have to kind of go, hmm, what could they have here? Right, they have their own Loxodon. Uh, I think we are in big trouble here. 
Um, I don't know if we can realistically beat multiple 3-3 three, three lifelinkers. Oh, boy. All right. Um, I also have a 5-5 five, five Loxodon. I believe we're going to be taking our own Loxodon turn here and then getting attacked for a million. Jeez. We're in trouble. I think we have to just take a locks it on turn though and just pump everything up and try and uh and build up our board because this is tough. Matches like this are pretty hard. Typically the the tokeny decks do very well against aggro decks because they're so good at gumming up the board. Um This seems like a very, very difficult board to attack through. If I had another mana source, I would play this locks it on too, just to get it out just to get it in play. But And they have the history. Oh, they still have three cards in hand, too. Oh my god. This is a massacre. How do you play an aggro deck and not know how to use the attack all button? Alright, uh, we are dead. Not uh, not dead dead, but we, we block a 6-6 six, six and take 18 here, and we're just dead. We're dead next turn. All right, tough game there. Uh, baffling ends in. Um, just going to take out some of our one drops here. I think our hunted witnesses are pretty bad. We're not playing any removal spells, and the 1-1 one, one body just doesn't really matter. So I like the idea of moving those. Baffling end in. Um, I, think I like the idea of playing Lyra. They shouldn't have too much removal in their deck. But I'm not really interested in adding a land. I think we'll just play Lyra as a later game thing. The game's going to go a little longer than we would like, unfortunately. Um, Banefire doesn't do anything against Lifelink. Frenzy. I don't think that we can win a Frenzy game. And Johnny Honor Guard. This matchup seems quite difficult, uh, truth be told. So, not really interested in getting into, getting into a longer game with them because, you know, they're super go big stuff, March the Multitudes, etc, etc, is going to be really effective against all of our cards, no matter how many we draw. You know, even if we draw 10 extra cards, we can't beat an army of, of 6 3-3 three, three lifelinkers. So, when you're boarding in Frenzy, you need to understand how the game is going to play out, and if you're going to actually want to have um, kind of a card draw engine and try and win a longer game or not. All right, so another kind of a hand where we don't draw more than one one drop. I mean, we only have two lands, but we're going to keep we have double history and enforcements. I think we're a dog this matchup, and this hand has a lot of potential. If we just draw two drop into two lands, this hand is perfect. So, that is not a two drop. And I don't even really want to trade my aspirant for this vampire. So, we're going to say go here. Again, our hand is definitely incomplete, but we keep it because it has high potential in a bad matchup. Yeah, I would say Sapperling Migration makes Savannah Lions look really bad, and we've missed completely, so now we're just dead. All right, I mean, I, I think the keep is still excellent. You know, it's... If we drew two drop land, we have a, we have a chance to win this game, whereas... Winning this game otherwise seems very difficult. I mean, now they flip landing and everything's just terrible. The good thing is that I feel like we've drawn pretty below average this league so far, and we're about to be 2-1. and one. So, there's definitely a lot of power in this deck. It's not super reliant on just having a fast draw or winning the die roll. You know, it definitely has staying power to go along with the aggression, which is very nice. I mean, I don't think you could have drawn a worse three cards given our opening hand, but silver lining is you probably would have lost this game anyway. <laughs> uh, so that's fine. Obviously, we're in game two, so this is going to decide the match, 
But typically, you would, would prefer to line up your bad draws against your opponent's good draws. Yeah, I mean, this is just this is just a joke. All right. I mean, we'll we'll draw one more. We'll take one more draw step, I guess. But we are, for all intents and purposes, very very dead. <laughs> little complaint equity there drawing another uncastable so that's good keep it to your lander eight uncastables still think it was a keep um i think it's important to base your mulligan decisions on the matchup and understanding what needs to happen and uh against a deck like that that seems really really good against us i'm more than happy to keep the high octane hand as missing a land and you know 30% of the time, we're just going to not draw a land and die. Maybe 40%. But then the remaining 60%, we draw a land. And we have our, we have our, one of our best possible draws and a good chance to beat the bad matchup. So I'm totally cool with that. Token deck is interesting. Definitely a deck that's was very popular week one and week two of, a tour of the format. And then not very popular since. Formats are very cyclical. So it is possible that deck maybe comes comes around again and starts being good again. Definitely interesting. For a deck playing 16 one drops, we are struggling a little bit to draw them, but it's okay. Stand's still fine. I mean, we have a Donda Vanguard into double history, and double history is busted on the play too. So just need to draw a land, and drawing a one or two mana spell is also fine. All right, so turn one sacred foundry tapped. Probably means just guy control. I would say that that's unlikely to be the mirror. Because 16 one drops, but we never one drops, so maybe they didn't either. You're killing me, Smalls. Thankfully, Adonda Vanguard is busted, so no Assassin Scatter here, and let's, uh, god, unreal. Syncopate, too, so they would have countered the history anyway. All right. It's a mixed bag, because against control decks that are playing Deafening Clarion, you do want to have a lot of your more powerful cards, but... Obviously, if we don't draw any lands, we can't cast them anyway, and it gives them too much time to play niv -Mizzet. So, they're casting Syncopate. This game has worked out very interestingly in our favor. We've gotten them to Syncopate uh, some non-History Banalia cards, which is good for us, honestly. You know, it's obviously not great that they're just answering our cards on curve. However, we still have all these really good cards in our hand, and they are wasting their their clean answers to them on our, you know, our Savannah lines and stuff. Okay. Um, we need to draw land. That's not a land. All right. <laughs> I think it's important to recognize you know like it's very easy to complain in magic and the complaining in magic is very very bad but it's important to recognize when you feel when you're running up uh, you know above or below expectation i would say our hands in this league have been mostly below expectation and the good thing is that again we're, we're two and one so that's a, a testament to the power level of the deck all right we've drawn our land um i believe we're going to look to get a history in play and try and build our board a bit um we are now unfortunately a little soft to deafening clarion so they can give us lifelink, kill our creatures, and it's Ack. But we're going to want to get this Tribunal down on the Drake sooner rather than later. And getting History online here is very nice, but now they have Counterspell mana up. So one of the problems with falling behind against a Counterspell deck is cards like Syncopate and Sinister Sabotage are usually very bad against us. So our deck is all one drops and uh, you know cheap things that get under the Counterspells. But if we miss land drops and stumble, then we lose that edge of being able to get under them and they can just cast their counter spells willy nilly and get us. Okay. Well, now deafening clarion turns into an, an auto loss. 
because I get to gain a million life and kill our creatures. But I mean, we could just cast Tribunal on one of these Drakes. It feels very, very bad. I really would prefer to, to build my board. But playing History here or a Marshal just doesn't do much. Um, this feels exceedingly bad. And if they just go land and visit, I mean, we can't beat the Drakes anyway at the moment, so... Uh, it's tough. It could hit our tribunal here. Get the rake back, draw a card. Yeah. That's really, really bad for us. We have no effective way to attack the fairy. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're about to pack it up here. Well, we've drawn our fourth land. And... I don't think it really matters what we do anymore. Try and build a board. Just say go. Just have a full seven card grip to ferry and two drakes and six mana. And we have a a knight, a very brave knight to take on these odds. It's interesting. Hmm. Alright. We're going to see it enough here. Alright, so our goal is to get under them. They are playing many, many crackling drakes. So again, um, our Banefire, I mean our Nibbit, our our frenzy plan is not going to be super exciting. Um, Venerated Loxodon, that didn't look very good that game, but it is very, very good against Deafening Clarion in particular. I don't really want to remove any of them. I think the two cards I would like to see are Beanfire. Again, with so many Crackling Drakes, I don't think that Frenzy is very good. And honestly, we might need to re-examine um, the presence of Frenzy in the board at all. Because a lot of these control decks now are just moving into like Turbo Crackling Drake, Turbo Niv-Mizzet style decks. And um, you can't really outgrind those decks of Frenzy because they just kill you. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of interested in Banefire. But, frankly, I'm not, like, super interested. Tribunal to answer the Drakes is nice. Um, I think I just want to stay aggressive on the play. A lot of Drakes. I mean, maybe we could bring in, like, two Banefire and cut, like, one Loxodon and one Tribunal. I could buy that. All right. I'm not thrilled to cut a Loxodon against the Deafening Clarion deck, but we've been getting glutted up almost all of these games. And I think it is more just, you know, some some awkward draws than anything else, but... All right. Sounds good. Opponent also mulligans. Top card, Bodyguard. I like that. The Bodyguards play well around Deafening Clarion also. I mean, we, do, we do have game against Deafening Clarion just in general. It's also a knight for our history, which might come up. We need to draw land, but I think I'm pretty happy playing a second Bodyguard. Make sure our venerated locks it on better too. Land. Killing me, Smalls.
justice. Justice has been served. Suppose if they're playing Crackling Drake, it's not as likely they're playing Sell the Wreckage, which is good for us. I guess it's actually not good for our main fire plan, but. Uh, all right, resolved. That's cool. Revitalize. Sort of an anti banefire tech. Not a bad card either, for those who've been playing a long time. Raise your hand in the comments if you remember the card Renewed Faith. Okay, so I think here, I mean, they didn't counter my history. Um, I think I like the idea of playing Venerated Loxodon. It plays around Deafen and Clarion, while also adding a lot of power to the board. Play their history, they play Clarion, it feels bad, you can't play Marshall. They counter Vista obviously stinks, but they can counter anything, so this has the highest upside. They have a Chemist's Insight, and they want to, uh, yeah, perfect. So this is definitely a good turn for us. Now they have to have an actual Wrath of God, which seems unlikely because they're playing Crackling Drake and their mana base probably can't support Crackling Drake and Double White. This game's definitely going better than the previous one. Couldn't go much worse, I suppose. Okay. So obviously stinks, but we still have a 4-4 in blood. So again, Venerated Loxodon, excellent against Deafen and Clarion. Allegiance Landing. All right. Get to mush here and then just play another history. Keep the ball rolling. History also plays around Deafen and Clarion reasonably well, given that like they would Clarion, which get another creature next turn for free. But it looks like they have a counter spell here. All right. It's fun. We got a 4 4. It's a farrier and visit here would be devastating, but. They chose to draw. They could have tucked this, which is a way to answer it. So them choosing a draw is a little scary for us. Also raises a pretty big question as to what we're attacking next turn. If I had a red source, I'd be happy to attack them to try and finish this game. Uh, what is this? Not just a strike. Ugh. Brutal. This card, I feel like, oh my god. I feel like these decks have gone away from this card. Um, it hasn't been as popular lately, but... Alright, well, we've now drawn both Banefires and our red sources. And uh, we're a little short on damage here anyway. Nine is a lot more than, say, four or five. Flashback Insight, Discarding Foundry. <sighs> this probably doesn't end well for us. I mean, attacking to fairy is, I think, almost worthless at this point. It goes to three, then up to four, down to one, up to two. At that point, they've just drawn so many cards, it probably doesn't even matter anymore. I'm just going to tag them. Nope, I said them. Maybe we draw running lands. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it matters anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, I have some one drops. One drops and a prayer. Chip in a chair, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and they have a counter spell too. Wow! All right. Pretty tough one. Pretty tough one.
And again, I think we're just going for them. Just try and cheese them out with Banefire here. It's very ultimate in two turns. We can maybe poke it once if we have to try and keep it off the ultimate, but let's just try and draw a red source and a lot of land. And our best way to win this game is going to be cheesing them out. So Well, that ends that plan. Matchup seems tough. I mean, now we're just completely dead. All right. Um, that seems tough. That seems tough. They obviously have a lot of answers for what we're doing. Um, the main deck, Crackling and Drakes, are like, they're bad against like green, black, and decks that are playing removal spells. But we don't have much removal in our decks. So they're actually very, very good against us. So looking for that good draw, you know, just that bam, 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 blocks it on, bam, you're dead draw. I haven't really gotten it yet. A lot of hands like this. Um, I mean, we keep saying that we got to trust our deck. This is definitely the worst of the four land hands we've seen so far. Um, double landing reinforcements and not much else. We're going to ship this one. Um, if this is a history, I keep for sure, because we have our history into reinforcements. However, double landing is very weak, and reinforcements is not amazing by itself. It needs something else in play to help it out. And this, I think this hand relies a little too much on our trusting our deck to get there. Um, if this is a history, I keep. If it's a Mar if it's a Benoish Marshall, I also keep, or a Dondo Vanguard. But I think double landing is a little too weak. Mm. All right, easy bottom. Uh, Mystic does not want to draw a lot of removal spells. You want to draw threats, especially on a mulligan. So we're we're bottoming almost any non Adanto Vanguard, non History Banalia card there. A lot of islands in this league. Nope. Never draw a one or two drop on turn two. All right, so opt can mean Drake's possibly a control deck, probably just Drake's. No, Island Island. Ooh, this is a uh, okay. This is a very good matchup for us. Um, this is the mono blue aggro. To, oh, come on, You're killing me, just killing me. It's just brutal. I don't even want to attack. Yes, I will attack. They don't. They don't know that my it's our only creature. All right. Go. This is a very good matchup because the mono blue deck is good at beating up on the slow decks, oh, but is very bad against the very fast decks because they just doesn't get on the board fast enough, and all their, all their creatures are so small and they have no removal. Um, but they have their obsession here, and if they have a dive down or a spell pierce, also it's going to be hard to win this game. Probably that's the thing is that against slower decks, this thing this card just spirals out of control. If we're attacking them back and just killing them, the cards don't matter. But obviously our hand here is pretty atrocious, so we will see what we can do. Um, we're almost priced into trying to kill this next turn, despite the fact they might have Spell Pierce or Dive Down. We'll see what we draw. I mean, this is just all types of awkward. Our best chance is probably just to go for it. If they have Cell Piercer Dive Down. I mean, what are we going to do? Adding a 4 4 to the board doesn't really help our cause too much. 
I think I also have Essence Scatter here too, so it's kind of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of scenario. Yeah. Mono Blue deck is entirely predicated on Curious Obsession. Um, their hands with Curious Obsession, oh my god. Their deck looks really, really good. The hands with that have a deck looks pretty bad. So your priority in playing against this deck is to not get Curious Obsessioned, which um, we are failing at at the moment. If we knew for a fact it was Spell Pierce and not Dive Down, we could have maybe like tried to wait, but they have Storm Tamer too. Yeah, I mean, this is just... Yeah, I mean, ugh. we can't even marshal and Loxodon. So now we can't even really race. Because we could, we could tribunal here. All that does, all that does, is kill the storm tamer. Yeah, which attack. And there are fourteen. Maybe we could have played the Loxodon instead. Nah, it's the problem is the Loxodon is not great in these mid game stages of racing. They're just drawing, they're drawing five cards a turn, so I, I don't think it really matters too much, unfortunately. Again, on the plus side, this is a very, this is a very good matchup. So despite the fact that our hand was pretty awful, I'm still not too concerned. Wow. They have eight cards in hand that didn't play anything. Which means they probably have multiple counter spells and we have no chance to win because they would probably deploy threats if possible. Oh my god. The Loxodons have looked bad, but mostly because we just never draw any one drops, which is really weird, honestly. Um, we keep mulliganing and then drawing the Loxodons with nothing else really going on. Um... I must we're just dead. I mean, there's the savvy cards in their hand are reactive and we can't beat the flyers over the next two turns, so we are just dead. <sighs> Alright, so we're bringing in Baffling Ends and possibly the Lyra. I'm fine taking the heroic reinforcements out in this matchup. Um, they're slow, they're vulnerable to counter spells, and they're not, it's not like they're killing our creatures anyway. So, we don't necessarily need more creatures, we just need to make sure that we keep them from getting out of hand. I'm uh, pretty happy with Lyra, pretty happy with Baffling End, Banefire's too slow. It also makes our deck like, like, more consistent, too, by lowering our curve a little bit, and making sure we get under them. Getting under them is very, very important because they're playing counter spells, and the way to beat counter spells is to get under counter spells. So, and then Lyra just seems like a total house against them. Okay, this hand is looks reasonable. Haunted Witness not at its best here, but you know. I would love to draw a one drop or two drop on turn two, which seems to be the theme in this entire league. Can we do it? Oh my god, we did it. All right, so now, see now if they have a, a curious obsession, we just guess history and attack them to death. So it's not even that bad. We'll see if it's happier than what they do. They just say go. Okay, so could have spell pierce or essence scatter. Um, in that case, I think I like just casting history. If they had tapped a land for a one drop, I had only spell pierce available. I would cast Loxodon. But given they could have either, um, I think history makes for better future turns. Loxodon is pretty good here too, though. And they can also have the uh, the hard counter spell, the the wizard counter spell. Um. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm going to tag with the creatures and just play history. This way we're at least getting damage in, and then Loxodons can get better later if we draw more one-drops or other creatures. Uh, yeah, this card exists too. All right. Well, now I get to resolve history at least. So, all right, so we lose we, we lose a 1-1 one, one here. It's fine. Sure. I'm totally okay with that. Mono blue deck is um, definitely an underpowered deck that has a lot of tricky cards in it. It's the kind of card where you can definitely outplay your opponents. But you're definitely signing up for a lower overall power level. The game, the deck's not going to win a ton of games for you by itself, aside from your curious obsession draws. You really got to work and time everything correctly and know when your opponent's going to do things so you can time your counter spells and tricks and so on and so forth. Okay, we are back, maybe, hopefully. Now, they have another trick service is bad for us because they get to tap our thing and we can't Loxodon. Um, we could just pre-combat it. That's also, I think we're going to attack. Let's see what they do. Mm -hmm. It's also possible to have a counter spell here, um, but that's fine. We had to go Sky Marcher into Loxodon. No counter spell here. I think the game is over. Okay, that's fun. Either way, we're still bringing the beats. This is a Tempest Jin. Makes me think they have a, a dive down or spell pierce to protect it. Very right, aggressive. All right, let me tell you a story. Pretty easy swing here. I will trade my aspirant for their storm tamer. Nope, they have a trickster. Okay, so they tap. They tap one of the creatures. We tackle the other one, and then I want to use venerated loxodon, which they can't counter anymore. So we'll tackle with just the vigilance knight. Hmm. And now our board is so large, it should not be able to be contained. Okay. I mean, they only have one card left, and we have a, a Tribunal in our hand, so we're winning the damage race, and we have an answer to this, so it's not too shabby. History is pretty great also. Um, yeah, and that gives City's Blessing. We can attack with, attack with, not attack with this knight. I guess they're likely to double block this 3-3 three, three knight. Um, if we don't attack, we can, con we can try, I don't even think we care about Tribunal at this point. I think we're just going to kill them. We don't really care about the 2-2 flyers drawing them a card if it has to attack. Yeah, we're, we're just super far ahead here. They actually didn't block at all, which astounds me. I, I just f 6 because I, I figured there's no way they didn't block something. Um, I guess I should have cast this Tribunal. I just didn't... Yeah, I just figured there was no way they weren't blocking. So they're trying to sleep us out here. Um, which 
is ambitious. I suppose if they have Surge Mare. I mean, we have another Knight and we have our Tribunal here. Surge Mare, Bump, Bump, it's four total power. I guess that's the card that actually kills us, right? I kind of want to hit the, the Storm Tamer, but if they draw exactly Trickster, they can tap my creature, pump twice and kill me. Yeah, I'm just going to hit the Surge Mare. Sleeper Bust now at this point. History is also going off next turn too, so... So yeah, I mean, I should have, I definitely should have cast the Tribunal that turn. I just, uh, just, I could not process a world where they weren't blocking my creatures and killing it. But sleep does make sense, so. All right. Thankfully, the error did not punish us. Hopefully, our opponent's connection issues to subside. We can finish a nice quick game three here. Sleep is a card to be aware of. It's definitely a kind of a scary one. Maybe we just can't keep a hand like this. Witness isn't even that good, and we don't draw a land, we're just dead. So. Alright, this hand's better. I think we got a triple one drop and perfect. So we'll top this. Triple one drop with landing is obviously excellent. No one drop is also excellent for us. This matchup where Haunted Witness looks pretty bad. Because nothing is dying, but most decks are playing removal. Alright, so we're not going to attack here into the Trickster. This hand got pretty good pretty fast. And no attacks. Tempest Jin. Okay. No obsession makes me happy. We can we can overpower Tempest Jin Jin no problem. Um we're unfortunately one short of going Marshal Loxodon, but I don't think that's the end of the world. Um, Marshal here by itself doesn't do much. Getting the Marshal to four, four toughness is kind of nice, but I think I want to just Loxodon here. Then we draw a land, we can go... Actually, we don't, we don't need a land, we can go Loxodon Marshal next turn. So it's a setup turn, but that's fine. We're not really in a huge rush. They're not going to be killing our creatures, so just making things big is our number one priority. Venerated Loxodon also just attacks through a Tempest Gym. So if they just like say go here and leave a counter spells, Loxodon can still get in. You know, and we'll have to decide what we want to play into what counter spells, depending on what they do. Again, though, now we've gotten ahead of them on the board. So things look pretty good here no matter what happens. Honestly, if they do nothing, I almost don't mind just going to combat, attacking with everything, and flipping the landing and just saying go. Um, we would lose one creature in the process, but we'll at least gain some life, or uh, the witness will die. And then we have landing going, so every turn they want to leave up counter spells and not play a threat, we can just make a token. Okay. We'll see what we draw. It's a pretty good draw. Um, I don't think it's necessary yet. I think I like my plan of just smash everything and flip landing and probably just say go. Um, they have five cards in hand. There's no reason to play anything into a counter spell here. We're already ahead on the board. So we're just going to swing. We'll see if they tap anything. They do. Okay, so now, now perfect. So now they tap stuff and now we can just play other stuff. They tap locks it on here probably. And now unfortunately we're once again one short of um, going Marshall locks it on. Yeah, this attack is not worth it. So, say okay. 
So now the options are play Marshall, or play Loxodon, or play Baffling End. And I think I like just adding a Loxodon to the board. It's a turn where we're not attacking anyway, so... And this makes our creatures huge. Now everything is sized appropriately, where if this Tempest Jin leaves the battlefield, they have no defense. And they once again need to spend their mana to cast things, or they're going to die, and we're ahead of the counter spells, and everything's going exactly as you'd expect it to in this matchup. That's pretty good. Card is very good against us. Not the end of the world, but very good. Land? I'll take a land here for sure. Tribunal? It's also interesting. Um, a dive down would be annoying, but I like the idea that if they dive down pre-combat, we can just not attack into it. I think I like going Marshall into Tribunal. Well, I guess that the Marshall would make it so they can't block anyway. Maybe we just slam here. And they have essentially no good blocks. Yeah, just slam. But we flip, we flip landing too. Dive down doesn't allow for any good blocks. They could double up on something, but if the Tempest Jin dies, that's most of their board. We have Baffling End for this token, or Tribunal for the token. It's funny that their best threat right now is just our creature. Okay. I suppose I could block here and then dive down the Tempest Jin, which is fine. Or not. Sure. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. This will take a bajillion damage, and we can still gain much of life. They're at six. We also got them to use their dive down. Uh, we still have our removal spells in hand, so. Haunted Witness. So I kind of want to um, play Witness Tribunal and just make them do something and see what they do. Force them to have like a counter spell or um, some sort of spell. And then we can see if we want to attack or not. Tribunal's the less efficient of the two, so I'm rather pretty happy to just cast it into the counter at whatever. You can just possibly double spell next turn. Okay, that's fun. And now they... Don't have a ton of great options. Let me just slam. They obviously have blocks they can make here, double, double blocks and stuff, but we're so far ahead in material that I'm okay trading a 5-5 five five for the 3-3 three three lifelinker. They have another dive down. It's a little annoying, but it's fun. You know, we are presenting a, a very large threat here, so... I think we would prefer to kill the Vampire over the Tempest Jin. Okay, this is fun. Assuming no dive down, this trade looks very good for us. Cool. So, this board looks good to me. They're at 5, and they have a 2-2. Two -two. And we have all well-sized creatures and Baffling End. And they scoop. Okay, so good matchup there. It's one of the nice things is if people try and play the mono blue deck to beat the uh, Jeskai decks that are kind of popular, then your mono white deck runs them over. So, all in all, I mean, that was a league where I think we drew below average for most of our games, and we still went 3-2. Um, that's partly based on the power level of cards like History of Analia, Reinforcements. Um, we just didn't draw a lot of one-drops, it felt like, because so our Loxodons didn't look great but things still went reasonably well. I think this deck is a great choice um, for, again, a modern player who's playing SCG Con this weekend and concerned with their lack of knowledge and standard. Um, you're just getting into Arena. 
I think the deck's just very good overall. Again, Oliver 2 went 6-2 at this deck at, at the Mox. Um, a different version went 8-0. Another version went 6-2, I believe. Um, this deck is still the real deal. And even though it was like a the big deal after the Pro Tours, everyone kind of overreacted towards beating it. And it's kind of fallen off the wayside a little bit. This is not a deck that you should sleep on. This deck is uh, very fast, very powerful, very resilient. Um, and has good options as well. I think it's important to address... The control decks and their million copies of Nib Mizzet and uh, Crackling Drake. So the Frenzy plan on the board might not be the Frenzy Banefire plan. That was good against the slower versions, but not against the threat heavy versions. Might be a little bit different. But on the whole, I think um, what we're doing here I'm pretty happy with. And of course, Tribunal answers uh, Nib Mizzet very cleanly as well. So deck's pretty sweet. Hopefully you enjoyed this video here on CoolStuffInc.com. My name is Jim Davis. Make sure you check out CoolStuffInc.com for all your gaming needs, magic and not magic, board games, you name it. It's all on there. And of course, my articles are a video on Monday, article Friday, other articles by fantastic writers, Jeff Hoagland, uh, Mike Flores, Ali Entrazi, great stable of writers on Cool Stuff. Make sure you check it out if you haven't been there, for maybe for watching on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and then I'll see you fine folks next week. It'll be after SCGCon. Will I have one? I hope so. We'll see. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys next time.